I think the most difficult bit is because I'm under a number of different hospitals with a number of different consultants. Not all cancer, but it all has to be organised together and I have to fill in each different consultant with my story and my journey and where I'm up to and what my drugs I'm taking because I have a thyroid problem. So that is actually dealt with Christie's but a different consultant, needless to say, to the oncology team. Um, I go to Salford Royal for my spine, that is the, the cancer, but again it's a different hospital. I go to Withenshaw because I have a urine infection so that has to be kept to check on. Um, and then there's the breast surgeon at Withenshaw and my um, rheumatologist at Altrincham General. It's a lot of different people are involved in the pathway, it's not just one place anymore and the needs of the patient mean that we need to move with times and look at what we can do. They can struggle to work, they can struggle with supporting family, um, they can um, struggle financially, um, they can struggle physically as well. So the complexity of their care at times can be quite intense. Historically, once patients were told that the breast cancer was no longer curable and that they were metastatic, they weren't given the same input because the life expectancy was quite short. These days, people live for years and years and years with metastatic breast cancer. And I get quite right, they're getting on with their lives quite as normal, but they're obviously living with this worry of the cancer returning again or progressing further. And there is a need for us to be able to help these patients along their journey and for the patients to be able to link in with us when they need to link in with us. Well, I think one of the things that the patients were telling us was that when changes happened in their cancer and its treatment, uh, they felt that they were having to explain that to all the different people they were seeing. So perhaps they might come and see their doctor and be told that, unfortunately, their scan had shown that the cancer was getting worse, that they needed to start a new treatment, and perhaps even had a whole new conversation about how long things might be expected to stay stable. And they were having to go and repeat that over and over again to different people that were involved in their care, and they found that stressful and, understandably, quite upsetting. And hopefully, what we've been able to do uh, is improve that line of communication. So all those facts that everybody was asking them are now communicated across in one letter that goes to the key people that need to know it. What's very difficult for patients with breast cancer, but also a positive thing, is that they can be very, very well for a long period of time. But that then causes problems from a point of view of knowing at what point those patients potentially may be becoming less well in the future and often what happens is that patients can deteriorate quite quickly and what we've seen in the past is that we've had to crisis intervene patients because they have changed so quickly. So involving people earlier means that you've got that help and support and we're more aware, we, we're picking up on things and we're liaising with the consultants and, and trying to be more proactive rather than reactive in our service. And I think as, as nurses or a different specialty we see things differently to what a clinician might see so we can actually add to that consultation and hopefully get the right management for that patient at the right time. We now see all new secondary breast cancer patients within a month of diagnosis and they have a full um, nurse-led appointment with a holistic needs assessment. That information is then shared with the GP um, so there's good coordination of care from the beginning and that patients know where to get their support from. But this covers things like your home life, are you comfortable in your home? Do you have the equipment you need? Is your family okay? Are your financial needs met? Um, are, your, are you able to sort of run your life from day to day and how you feel from day to day in all kinds of things that aren't medical? When we're seeing the patients in clinic, in a clinic setting with the consultant, you're automatically doing that assessment anyway. As you're talking to your patient, you know you can see whether they're particularly anxious or particularly worried about certain aspects. They will often talk to you about, is it to do with something to do with the family? Are they worried about telling the family, talking to the family? Or is it to do with more physical things like pain um, or just feeling generally unwell? And from that, we can signpost them to the right people or we can explain, or we can, work as an advocate on their behalf with the, between the consultants saying, right, well, this is going on with this lady, so this might be needed. 
One thing that I've found about um, the MSIT project is it's been in hugely encouraging as a patient to see just what goes on behind the scenes and it's absolutely incredible how dedicated everybody is. And thank you.